He's willing to do not only to fulfill his mission, but what, it, what is he willing to do in order to survive? And so you're, you're going to notice a lot of a lot more opportunity to sort of uh, pick and choose interesting cover opportunities. Um, but at the same time, uh, we also that influenced us to change the way our controls work a little bit. So, for example, you don't have to hold A to keep sprinting because that gives us an opportunity to use vault in an interesting way. It also allows you to sort of uh, articulate. Uh, a little bit, with a little bit more finer tooth comb, the things that you can attach to in cover without uh, sort of getting stuck into areas where you may not want to. And you know, I think the system that Gears uses works great for their environment, um, but there were definitely some changes that we needed to make to make ours a little bit uh, more interesting. Focus in to make sure that it feels as powerful and visceral as possible. We play around with this notion of ambiguity and depth feel satisfied when you kill an enemy, but at the same time we want you to reflect a little bit about the pain that that, uh, that, that imagined. Those, those over-the-top action moments that are, that are in a lot of the other competitors' games, but is looking for something just a little bit more. And, uh, and 2K has given us the opportunity to really focus in on this dark and mature narrative that, uh, that I think really is unique. Um, especially since it takes place in this surreal environment. It's just something that you don't typically see in a modern military game. Gamers are maturing right now uh, to the point where they're looking for something that's just a little bit deeper, um, that's a little bit uh, more making them question and think uh, about the things that they're doing. And, um, and I think a, a lot of times we don't focus enough on, uh, on a particular journey or story that we've, we've tried to craft. If you look at uh, like retaining walls, if, there's, if they're cracked um, and there's and maybe there's some sand coming through them, uh, you, can, you, you can blow those up and use those to your advantage. If you're observing, you look around. Tank. We do have a, um, a competitive multiplayer that we're excited about and we're going to be talking about it very soon. Go down. Take him up. Everyone move. Scenarios where you're not just repetitively killing the same enemies over and over and over. Obviously, um, a realistic game has to sort of focus on those those things that uh, that people uh, consider realistic. The force operators into the heart of a very interesting environment, which is Dubai after it's been ravaged by devastating sandstorms and cut off from the rest of the civilized world. With a lot of the, the other games are similar to us as well, because we want to watch these characters as they... But as, as well, we have sort of a unique uh, setting um, that allows us to do some freedom. Um, the people that are left in Dubai are survivors of the storm, and so sort of the chain of command is broken down, and they've sort of been divided up into different factions, and they've tried to find ways to survive. And uh, even the soldiers that, are, that were caught there and left there have had to sort of piece together um, opportunities for themselves in order to, to overpower their enemies and to survive. Spread out and find them. Shoot, take them on away. Hang Shoot, tight. Gunner, on the field. Locations and in the U.S. to see the differences for a very specific purpose in Spec Ops The Line. The smoke is toxic. The, uh, if, if even a small piece of it touches your skin, it's most likely going to kill you. Our squad finds themselves in a scenario where it's being used and then has to make some decisions later on in the game that I'm not going to spoil for you here, but it's definitely an integral part of the journey and the sort of evolution that these characters take as they encounter this, this horrific chemical warfare device. That's the left. Why do this? These people were beaten. The fight was over. It's a message to the survivors. Don't fuck with us. What survivors? But to, but to stop and think a little bit. Need you focused on the mission. What mission? We're basically poking a dead dog with a stick. Um, like you mentioned, it's a gameplay tool. We hope that, that, it's a, that it's an opportunity for players to express the way that they want to play. Um, we don't want to force players into micromanaging a squad. Uh, this is not a tactical simulation game or something like that. But it does have the, the opportunity for you to interact with the squad, tell them who to attack. Uh, you, you, you may have noticed that there was, you may have seen the, the flash and suppress command that's available when the squad is in position and it makes sense for them to do that. And the way that they looked 
and towards the end of the game I can tell you that devolves um, in a very interesting way uh, both visually and with the way that they speak and the way that they react to the commands that you give them as well. So we've, we've had a chance to sort of explore a new and unique way to, to use a squad in a squad based game and, uh, and we really hope that it becomes an accessible way for people to enjoy the, this, this type of experience. The thing, and so visually we've taken advantage of the third person. Um, you can take cover but also uh, we have a, a really cool melee system where you can, you can actually see uh, the characters performing really physical moves which, which I think is really interesting and, and some unique ones like if you vault when enemies on the other side of cover you can kick them in the face and knock them down and things like that. Also it's um, tying a little bit into our, our moral decisions as well, some of the micro decisions that are along the way. You may have noticed that there's enemies on the ground that are bleeding out. Um, some aren't dead and, and also they have resources that you may want. Um, it's really interesting to watch how players... Uh... Today we're focusing on single player obviously, but I, I can tell you that we have a great multiplayer. We're going to be talking a lot, about, a lot more about it in the, in the upcoming months very soon. Um, and I, I can't really spoil anything else about that for you right now. Ah! Processing. Our, our particle effects, and all those things have to do with sand. And um, so you'll notice that, that enemies get sand in their eyes and they're coughing and, and the squad reacts to that and, and takes them out and you can as well. Um, on top of that, you did mention there, there's sand avalanches. So there, at the start of the game, we teach those things so the player can very easily recognize those in the environment. But we have a number of those throughout the game, and if you're perceptive, you'll find opportunities to use them. On top of that, and we've been able to put a lot of work into the physicality of those sandstorms. You'll see them ripping apart buildings and pushing objects and, uh, and taking out enemies and things like that. And it's been a lot of fun to be able to focus on that, um, and I'm glad we've had the time to do that. An area where you fall off of, a, off of a building and are injured and knocked out and you wake up and your squad is missing. Um, there's other scenarios where we ride along trucks or we fly a helicopter. Um, in a, in a, a Obviously, in a shooter that's that's realistic, where you're fighting human enemies in the harder difficulty levels, you're going to feel really safe behind cover, and you're going to feel really unsafe outside of cover. Um, you're going to see a lot of enemies making movements to flank you. Um, you're going to see enemies that fall back when, when different way than the other enemies, and also. You started out um, fighting against uh, actually armed civilians that an offering and uh, what we're showing up in the different franchises and there's so many ways that we've seen this military story told before and yet we felt that there was a way that was not being utilized. There was a niche that was not being hit upon and that's what we've done with Spec Ops is that we are bringing in that too as Captain Walker and your squad mates get drawn further and further into the madness around you until you yourself until you yourself become a part of it. Hey, anyone out there? Worms started to get harder, uh, started to hit the city worse. They were ordered out. That's enough, Lugo. Where your squad is, joking around. They're very casual with each other. They're almost having a good time at the beginning of the mission because these are professional soldiers. They are out doing their job. Lugo, do you ever actually hear the shit coming out of your mouth? No, I do not, sir. I find it messes with my rhythm. You know this is a trap. Absolutely. The whole city's gone crazy. 